What up, Hope Biscuits? It's your girl Skitten, back at it again. Hello, husband. What's up? How you doing? Yeah, so is this before or after the 75,000? This is after the 75,000. Congratulations. Thank then. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hit 75,000 subscribers. I'm three quarters of the way to 100,000. Yeah. I'm very excited about it, super stoked. Did I just say stoked? Who am yeah. I? What, what am Shaw, I? Shaw, dude. Shaw, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Super stoked, bro. Yeah, radical, man. <laughs> Righteous. <laughs> Righteous. Righteous. Anyway, yeah, this, so this is after 75K. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do to celebrate 75K. Eat a pie. Um, that's what you would the do. The entire pie. Ugh. Treat yourself to a pie. I don't even like pie like Put it that. in the oven to heat it up and get no. some ice cream on the side. A cake. Oh, okay. So for my birthday, Dr. Okay. D made me a strawberry tres leches cake. Mm -hmm. So good. It was mm -hmm. so good. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to eat an entire strawberry tres leches cake by myself. You remember that scene in Matilda yeah. where that kid yes. gets in trouble and then Mrs. What Mrs. Trunchbull makes him eat the, the entire chocolate, chocolate, chocolate cake. cake. Yeah. But anyway, today we are here to watch Casual Geographic. Uh -huh. um, we're a couple weeks late on this. This is his, we did the Mother's Day on your channel, right? I did the one about pandas. You did the Mother's Day on yours. Well, so I did the Mother's Day on my <laughs> channel. Yeah, you And now we're doing Father's Day on my, I got, I got, the, I got the holidays. I know that he's gonna talk about seahorses and I'm ready. Which one do you like more? Of what? Mother's Day or Father's Day? I guess. Father's Day because when I used to work in restaurants, Father's Day was not as busy, busy as Mother's Day. People get real mean around yeah. Mother's Day, okay? They really do. They will like call you 30 minutes before be like, I need a reservation for 50 people. Like, it's Mother's Day, I can't help you. What do you mean you can't fucking help me, you stupid fucking, like, God, chill, who are calm you, down. Who are you channeling right now? Who is that? Who, who is mean man number seven that occupies so much room in your head? <laughs> It's Let happened, it okay? Let it go. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys are doing well, staying safe and sanitized. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Let's do it. Are fathers really that necessary? You know, it's crazy we can even ask a question Jesus. like this. You we know how important father figures actually are? Studies done in South Africa found that without the presence of older, mature bull elephants, the younger bachelor males were more likely to exhibit aggressive, destructive, and straight up menace behavior. Nice. Escalating all the way to them projecting their daddy issues That's on the south right. side of a rhino. That's just and it wasn't right. until more seasoned bulls were brought back in that the rhino centric assaults decreased. And even though with humans, the stakes don't usually involve a rhino's rectum, subtracting fathers from a population can be just as problematic. I'm not gonna list all the ways because then we'll be here forever. Just oh, know no. that a majority of the prison population wouldn't even be there in the first place if their fathers had come home from getting milk. Huh. Unless you're an athlete, in which case it's just a buff to your greatness. There are Damn. many fathers in nature that are just as important and seahorses, aren't really one of them. What? We call seahorses wow. amazing fathers, and really all they do is spunk out new recruits to the yes. senses from their Disgusting. midsection. It's really no different Disgusting. than what every 14 year old does the moment they discover incognito. I Except with them, their swimmers aren't undercooked. And I'm sorry if that ruins seahorses for you. No, like, actually, I'm sorry. Please, you don't so have, sorry. How much footage do we really need to see of that? It, it's funny how when much? you put it next to his face. Like, he's just <laughs> unapologetic. So sorry, in fact, that with the help of ChatGBT, I'm going to genuinely apologize for my actions by not apologizing at all. I've made a severe and continuous <laughs> lapse in my judgment. ChatGPT is just one of Damn. the services provided by the sponsor of this video, Opera Browser. Opera is considered the best browser for tech fans, and it's the first browser to go live with integrated generative AI tools, which means you can finally get the answers to the truly hard-hitting questions of life. No need to go monkey branching from tab to tab when AI has all the answers you'll ever need. But like huh. a seahorse after his fifth contraction, there's still somehow more. Opera also has browser native contextual I AI prompts. What that means is you can request AI assistance based on what content you're viewing with just a click. If you're like me and your attention span has eroded to the point I'm where so you're sorry. It, so it says craft a rap about it. Yeah. And I just. I don't really support AI, right? Uh huh. But I can't wait. Yep to see the next generation of AI rappers. I just need to know. I'm, j I'm I so- I wanna know what it's- I'm so ready. How many yas does it end with? I'm, I'm so- I'm on the internet, yeah. I'm so ready. Searching these terms, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you're like me and your attention span has eroded to the point where you'd rather you mop a beach than read more than one yes. page at a time, one of these AI tools lets you shorten a long read into more digestible chunks. Okay. And so much more. If you get Opera using the link in the description, you'll get these AI prompts on default, along with ChatGPT already in your sidebar. 
You can also create a pin board of pretty much anything you're interested in. You can actually check out my pin board in the description. You also get to choose from a library of thousands of wallpapers to personalize your browser. So make sure you use my You also get to create a pin board library of thousands of wallpapers to personalize your browser. So make sure you use my link below to download Opera and shout out to Opera for sponsoring this video. But in all seriousness, God. yes, seahorses are the only fathers that give birth and they do so after six weeks of incubating his brood of up to and over a thousand babies in his a belly. Thousand? Now add in the fact that seahorses will often mate for life and reinforce their pair bond with a synchronized dance and Stevie Wonder can see how seahorses got the reputation of being the best fathers in the animal kingdom. Right. Except the male seahorse will occasionally cannibalize a small percentage of the kids he pops out. I mean, out. he's got so many. Small percentage. He's got so many. Let's focus on the positives here, people. He eats a little, he provides a lot. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I feel like that's justified. I think it's fine. While it's true, a baby seahorse is called a fry. Papa seahorse acts a little too accordingly by Damn. turning his unluckiest children into an infinite food hack. Damn. Not enough to truly threaten the survival of the next generation, but just enough for me to confidently say you can find about 10 better fathers in nature. Oh. Look, Kronos did it, and look how well that turned out exactly. for him. Exactly. We got like a whole slew of good kids from that. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> that picture's insane. Like, for example, the fox. Okay. Like the seahorse, the red fox is often monogamous, meaning that one Spider-Verse line can easily apply to them too. At first, Father Fox has a full-time job bringing back food to his partner who stays home with the kids. But as they get older, that's when the tough love starts. Once the foxlets start getting bigger and more capable, their dad starts showing up with less and less food. Now. Instead, he'll start burying the extra food near the den and even cover it up with twigs ah. and brush in order to teach his kids like how to be more dependent and find it themselves. And that's not the only life lesson served by Father Fox. Because in an area where foxes were getting murked by coyotes, researchers noticed male foxes playing with their kids by chasing and ambushing them. Didn't you just like eat like a lot of microwave food? Yeah. So that's the same thing as like digging it up, basically, like going to the deep freeze and be like, where they put, they like put your stuff at the very bottom. I'm teaching you life lessons. You dig in there and find that Lunchable. Almost like they were trying to teach the next generation how to avoid predators. And speaking of coyotes, you'll find that there's some W dads too. So for all my guys with uh, girlfriends or wives, you can do the same thing with your girlfriend. Just like stand behind corners. And when she turns around, them, just grab her real quick. Throw her onto something don't soft. Don't do that. Don't, Just ambush her. Don't do Teach that. Teach her how to. That's what I do to you. But I'm prepared. That's, that's exactly the point. And your girl will be too. This generation had over Fatherhood. predators. And speaking of coyotes, you'll find that there are some W dads too. Coyotes are just as loyal, and sometimes even death doesn't make them find a new mate. Coyote couples Damn. typically hunt together, but as scavengers who will often finesse food from much bigger threats like wolves and bears, it's usually the male that'll stake out a possible bounty first while his mate watches from a safe distance. Huh. That way, if worse comes to worse and he gets put on a shirt, his mate still has a chance to raise their children as a single mother. You wouldn't see a seahorse do that. And honestly, <laughs> wild candids in general kind of break the rule of male mammals being more of a deadbeat than a roadside raccoon. Father wolves are just as overprotective as you'd expect. Here, you can see a father wolf harassing a black bear and trying to get it to chase him after the bear wandered and got too close to his pups hidden near some trees. And African wild dogs will actually let That's the pups adorable. feed first rather than have the most alpha male get first serves and have everyone else fall in line. They've also been known to spend days looking for any lost pups, but the gold standard of dog fathers would have to be the golden jackal. They're another couple that takes till death seriously, and okay. like with coyotes, they'll often go grocery shopping together. And when his partner's <laughs> pregnant, Father Jackal digs a burrow for his mate to rest in, and he'll defend that den with his life if it gets to that point. And once the pups are born, the male jackal will go to any lengths to find enough food, even if it means squaring up with wild boars oh. or stealing food from right under the nose of tigers or wolves. Oh. And even though he risks everything for food, most of what he eats just gets regurgitated back at the den for his kids. They're top tier dads, because if anything ever happened to the male jackal, there's a good chance the mother wouldn't be able to keep the kids alive on her own. Mm -hmm. So yeah, wild dogs seem to mostly beat the deadbeat dad allegations, okay. but at least they have a partner they can count on. Meanwhile, the great value ostrich of the Andes has to hard carry the whole bloodline by himself. Really? Maria is a player who runs game on up to 10 females who all take turns dropping eggs in his nest. Damn. That's about as far as Mother Rios contribute as they leave Damn. the male to look then after the massive did. family by himself. Daddy Rio will even live off a quarter of the food he normally would, since That's he'd rather crazy. starve than leave his nest of up to 60 eggs unsupervised 60? for too long. Damn. Man. 
Talk about sowing wild oats. God damn. That's for real though. You know how he just talked about seahorses. Yeah. Maybe the daddy Rhea needs to take a page out of the seahorse book. And just start book. Eat, just cooking eat a, omelets. Eat a couple. Start, just a couple. You a got few. 60. That's crazy. What's your turnover rate? Is it high? <laughs> Being a stay-at-home single father only gets more difficult after they hatch, where Latin Big Bird acts as their bodyguard while also teaching his class of chicks where to find food and where to best avoid becoming it. All while his baby moms try out every flavor of male like samples at a mall because female Rias are for the whole prairie. Huh? I'm pretty sure the father Rhea likes it that way since once the eggs are laid, he'll chase off anything with a pulse that even looks at them the <laughs> wrong way, even if anything includes an amorous female. Daddy Rhea puts his kid- actually that sounds kind of gross. Father Rhea puts his kids first, but he's not the only member of the rat type family that does. Cast warriors are like if nature engineered an animal with the sole goal of fucking with my sanity. But even this Jurassic drumstick finds time to be an S tier father. Drumstick. Female cassowaries also social distance from their eggs and children, leaving the parents all distance. up to the male. And even though cassowaries are actually really shy and would rather run from smoke than to it, a male will turn it up to 100 if his children are involved. And just like his cousin the Rhea, the blueberry flavored paralysis chicken spends nine months raising his clutch of chicks, teaching them how to survive until they can successfully do it on their own. In fact, cassowaries are such devoted dads that the whole reason we call them the most dangerous bird in the world is likely because of the lengths we've seen them go to protect their children. Ooh. In 2012, a photographer was charged and yeeted off a cliff by a hostile cassowary that what I- What did you just say to me? What? They can do that? Off a cliff? The tourist that they just saw a man shirt rip. What and the now hell? Now to bed had some kids in the area. But considering both them and Rias have to carry the well-being of their entire family on their backs, mm -hmm. I don't blame them for lashing out. The giant water bug does the same thing, except with them, it gets ridiculously literal. Ah, but... Water bugs will lay their eggs above the water, and yeah. it's the male that stands guard and defends them against risks to minor safety, which includes scaring off other females that would easily turn his pride and joy into protein powder. There's even one type of water bug <gasps> that'll physically carry up to 150 eggs uh. on his back. With his future no! progeny glued to him, the male water bug no! is stuck like that for weeks, while his mate no! gets to go out and act like a free oh agent switching like, teams like, and looks like, for a new male like, to dump dependents like on. In this time, the father ah! water bug can't fly. Oh my god! Okay. Stop, stop that other thing. That is gnarly. Take a peek. No. Take a just a little, just a little tight. <laughs> it's horrible. That's horrific. Oh. I can't eat as much. I got like a taste in my mouth. He has to constantly climb up to the surface to let its eggs get air, and he's a much easier target for predators. But at least with him, the backbreaking labor of being a father ends the moment they hatch. I'm sure there's a certain crocodilian that wishes. Did you think that was one coming out? The yeah. Thing? Oh man. Yeah. I thought he was bursting up out the shell. Okay. All right, we're back. Reptiles. It was that easy. You probably wouldn't Much expect cuter. a cold-blooded predatory yeah. sledgehammer to have a section in a video about great fathers. My leg! But if that were true, this picture wouldn't That's exist. Adorable. This is a male gharial acting as a sentient school bus Love for it. about a hundred of his kids. Normally, croc miners ride shotgun inside their parents' jaws. Right. But armed with a mouthpiece designed for griefing fish, instead they choose to be on water bug timing. Just like the Rhea, the guy Gario flexes a whole harem of females as procreation partners, and he gets to be the one to play one man daycare as he guards them all. He might not be so close funny. to the single father the Rhea, Cassowary, and Waterbug are, since his mates don't go out for milk indefinitely, but Gario's might be the most unexpected animal on here. Oh, man, so and right many. there with him are frogs. Hello. For example, the smooth Hi, guardian cutie. frog, that's his name by the way, I'm not making that up, he flexes his parental prowess by being the one to stay with the eggs and guard them after his mate lays them into the ground. Mm -hmm. And after almost two weeks of waiting, he's the one that carries the tadpoles on his back after they hatch. Okay. And he's the one that finds a nice pool for his brood to finish developing in. And it's not like he just dumps them in the first source of water he finds. Right. Nah, not only are they particular about where and what they put their tadpoles in, the father will even equally divide his children between pools if he can. Like oh. if he's carrying 20 tadpoles, he'll put 10 in one pool, 10 in the other. Give They're not the only frogs that take a cue from Dom Toretto and put family first. <laughs> the giant African bullfrog can have not hundreds, but thousands of little ankle biters in a breeding season, and it's the dad that looks after them all. And I'm so sorry. Yeah. Did he say thousands? That's why when they do those little jokes, when they buy, like, people were doing those jokes on TikTok where they're buying frog tadpoles, mm -hmm. like putting them in rivers and stuff. Right. That's why it's such a big deal. Because they're invasive. They're so, they have so many kids, and they eat everything. everything. 
And for almost a month, he defends them like a slimy, water-loving pit bull, biting anything that even looks like a threat. Yeah, they have teeth, by the way. He'll even go out of his way to dig a canal to a bigger pond if he notices that the one his kids are swimming in starts to dry up. So They're solid kids. fathers, yeah. although admittedly, they can resort to seahorse behavior by eating some of the kids he was guarding. As but then again, should. cannibalism is kind of what frogs do. Right. Yep. Darwin's frog will also eat his own children, but with them, they have a process. After his girl lays and leaves, once again, he's the one that sits with them and waits for them to start moving. Mm -hmm. Once they do, instead of backpacking, his family, Darwin's frog takes it a step further by swallowing the eggs, letting them develop in his vocal sacs. Oh, and when they're ready, sick. he delivers them to the world I'm not by lie, puking his progeny out. That's and sick. depending on how that's not what most people mean when they talk about swallowing kids, you know? Yeah. Right. What do this they mean is, when they this say is that? Way better. What do they mean when they say that? You know? What do they mean? I'm just saying. What are they saying when it's, they say it's it? It's a little different. The concept. The Darwin frog is puking out a kid. What is what are the girls it's, doing? It's a little it's a, it's a little I didn't say girls. Uh-huh could be anybody. How you define birth, you can argue that seahorses aren't the only fathers that qualify for paternity leave. They're definitely not the only fish. Another unlikely superhero father is a type of fish known as the stickleback. It starts with the male stickleback creating a nest for his females to lay their eggs in, and he holds the nest together using a special glue formed by his kidneys. That stuff isn't exactly huh. easy to make, and the stronger the current of the river he's in, the more kidney glue he has to use in his house. Right. Huh. Sometimes the cost of making his own product means he dies soon after spawning. But the ones that don't get Mufasa in a process revolve their entire lives Mufasa. around their families. They constantly have to chase off jealous rivals. And he'll spend most of the day fanning his clutch of eggs so that they can get enough oxygen while also washing away parasites and waste. And they'll even go as far as guarding the fry up to a week after they hatch. And he's not the only fish that's known for playing Mr. Mom. The common goby often raises hundreds goby. of eggs by himself, I've the same way the stickleback one, yeah. does. Except the goby's also likely to eat the eggs that take the longest to hatch, just so he can dive back into the dating hey man, pool sooner. Hey man, you take it too long, you late. Maybe seahorses aren't that bad, but if you're looking for a father that you can trust with 100% of your children, we gotta talk monkeys. Okay. With golden lion tamarins, it really does take a village to raise okay. a baby, and nobody okay. takes more of a role than the father. Cause he's the one that grooms, plays with, and carries his kid around. In fact, the only time he leaves them with the mother is so they can nurse, and even then, he takes them right back. Not only that, but he'll even act as a midwife during birth, as the father will help clean the baby, fresh out the womb, and even bite off the umbilical cord. And it's oh, far from dope. just them. Owl monkeys also have the father as the de facto parent, with the mom only carrying around the infant for the first week. And now we know why. Mother marmosets like the golden tamarind often have to pop out twins that add up to 25% of her body weight. Wow. Birth is not a fun process, and it's now believed that the physical toll it takes on the mother is why the males are the ones that take the lead in parenting. Makes Meaning, sense. marmosets are the only other animals that figured out the concept of maternity leave. Right. There's also the fact that <laughs> males literally put their families first. You see, the thing is, with most male mammals, an ovulating female instantly triggers a rise in testosterone. Yes. Why those same male mammals are often good at making babies, not so much raising them. Yeah. But a study showed that while single mateless marmosets reacted strongly to pheromones from females, the spoken for father marmosets really couldn't care less. So not only huh. are they devoted fathers, they're also loyal enough husbands to reject any females for their family's sake. Smart. Some humans can't relate to that. And Man. we never thought a tiger could either, but this one managed Man. to change a lot of what we Looking at you, Nick Cannon. Hmm? Why are you bringing Nick Cannon into this? That man made Drumline. He had a baby with a girl in like June. And he's pum pum pum. And well, then man, he had another baby with yeah. a girl in August. It's a man with ambition. You know, he's just traveling and travel. You know, it's like a traveling salesman. He's just dropping off vacuums and bitches living rooms. Oh but the vacuums God. are babies. You know what I'm saying? Oh my God. <laughs> Like that guy with the really good sales pitch about the cleaning material. Also, Elon Musk, though. Elon Musk also has like 10 kids. He's like the digital version of that, like those pop-up ads. <laughs> Click here for a free iPad. I'm dead. <laughs> knew about them. P243 was a male tiger in an Indian reserve who I'm confused sure. scientists by single-handedly raising four cubs after his mate and baby mother yeah. passed tense. He'd share his kills with them, seemingly patrol the cubs' territory for danger. There was even a time where he brought down a whole cow, but didn't take any for himself and instead left it all for his cubs. And even though at this time he was an eligible bachelor, for a while it seemed like 243 was actively rejecting the advances of females just to keep his cubs a priority. This flew in the face of everything we originally thought about male tigers being just as deadbeat as their prey. 
And there's a good chance this wasn't just an exception. There was another case where a male named T25 was caught playing protector for a pair of orphan cubs that weren't even his. Aww. So there's a solid chance that we got it all wrong and that tiger dads are just as capable of stepping up. Right. Just like some birds. Because when a mother kestrel got bambied by some owls, it was the father kestrel that went on to carry the family. And unlike the Rhea, kestrel males don't typically look after their chicks. They usually just provide food, but it seemed that the widower knew that wouldn't be enough. The male slowly but surely started doing all the things the mother would have. Right. Rooting them, feeding them, keeping them warm, and even tearing up the food he brought into tiny pieces the weak old chicks could eat. Keep in mind, he wasn't good at it at first, and researchers <laughs> generally wondered if he'd be able to pull through for that. In fact, it took a couple tries for him to realize that his chicks wouldn't eat if he didn't do the bird equivalent of cutting up their food for them. Right. But that's the thing. It didn't come naturally, and he still kept trying for he his chicks, better. and he still managed yeah. to raise them. But there is no animal that does more for his chick than the last animal in this video. Okay. Be honest, you knew there was- Pinguinos! Nobody does more than I do for my chick. Tell him. You said that, and I, my first thought was just like, my chick bad. My <laughs> Not aw. No. <laughs> penguins wouldn't get mentioned in a video about fathers and it's because male emperor but also you do a lot for your chick baby quack thanks Welcome. you knew there was no way emperor penguins wouldn't get mentioned in a video about fathers right. and it's because male emperors have to spend two months straight alone with their egg yep. that's two months of complete darkness while tanking negative 40 degrees fahrenheit and getting okay. smacked by 120 mile per hour winds so cold if the father happens to fumble the egg onto the ground so it takes less than a minute for the chicken side <laughs> to enter the gulag the margin for error is so small that for the two months of ice-chilled, sun-deprived hell, the penguin dad barely moves at all since yep. the entire time he's balancing the egg on his feet. And when the egg finally hatches, the fasting father feeds his baby with a crop milk made from a gland in his throat, making him only one of three birds that uses crop milk. It isn't until the mom finally returns from sea that they switch off and the father can finally feed himself. But by the time he waddles all the way to the breeding ground, pulls a female, does a two-month mannequin challenge in Satan's icebox, gets relieved by the mother, and waddles back to sea, it's been a good four months since he's eaten anything, right. during which he loses almost half of his body weight in the process. <laughs> like when 50 Cent nearly became a hashtag for a movie, I guarantee none of you actually oh, watched. No. I know I didn't. And that's assuming his mate does come back oh. and doesn't get put on a milk carton while out fishing. Damn. At the end of the day, Emperor Penguin Dads get griefed by every force of nature, all that that little gray insane. baby face tap dancing mini him. Mm -hmm. And because of all that, I think it's fair to say Emperor Penguin Dads are the goats of fatherhood. But that's gonna do it for this video. I hope oh, you enjoyed it. Man, Make I sure you drink more. water, hug your mother. Shout out to all the fathers out there for real. Y'all really don't get enough credit. So if you have a father, Dang. let him know you appreciate him. Don't wait for a calendar or Instagram to tell you to. And if you don't have a father, my condolences. I know today's probably not the best for you. Just try to take care of yourself. Aww. And if you don't have a father Fair. or a mother, Damn, okay, Batman, who are your ops? <laughs> May you turn all that character development into something positive. Just know, you better have a banging college essay. Shout out to Oppa for sponsoring this video. Not the freaking college essay, my god. I was gonna make an inappropriate joke. Why? Well, about but what? I, but I won't. About you raising my kids? No. I was gonna say, you know, you might not be a father. Uh-huh. But I still call you daddy. You had to try to like, ha and like ham it up for the camera? It's funny. It's, it's a pretty, funny thing. It's to pretty say. good. Yeah. My favorite dad in the video, by far, uh -huh. by far, is the lion that raised the little orphans. Tiger that raised the little orphans. I was like, there was a lion that yeah. I fell asleep. No, the tiger that raised the little the little orphans. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's really cool. I really like the ones where we were like, because when I grew up, we we were taught about animals as like dumb, soulless, mm -hmm. compassionless beasts. No personality. At Dogs all. have like a little personality, but just, not really. Just a tidbit, yeah. just enough to train. And my, like my great grandfather raised you know hunting dogs. Right. And even though us as kids would talk about their personality, they just were dead set on like, nope, that's not their personality. That's just mm -hmm. them being dogs. Is what mm -hmm. dogs do. Don't get it confused. You right. know. And like we always kind of felt like that's like wrong. Yeah. And they called us dog people, you know, animal lovers, yeah. those kind of things. And I, you know, I think it's really important that you can acknowledge that animals do these incredible things that are almost human, but they're still wild animals. I'm not yeah. taking away of from course. the fact that they're a wild animal. You can do you both. Know? You can I don't do want to pet it. I just want to look and go on. I mean, I do. I do. 
No, we don't want to pet it. Keep your hands in your pockets. <laughs> but you know, it's very much a like, por que no los dos situation. You yeah. know, always enjoy Casual Geographic. He's always super informative. You know, I I really enjoyed uh, recognizing the clips. Yeah, that's me too. Like, that's yeah, one me too. Of, it's, like, it's like a little Easter egg, yeah. you know? Like it's one of my, because yeah. my husband and I, we've seen so many freaking documentaries. And at this point, we've watched so many freaking Casual Geographic videos. Yeah, we've seen so. all the stock footage, dude. But anyways, don't forget to leave your reaction requests and recommendations down in the comments below. Don't forget to check out Internet Historian over on my husband's channel. And other than that, peace out, hope biscuits. It's skittin' lit.